Good morning, everyone. As you can see on our screen, we have our gathering song um, up first, as per usual. I believe this is our last week of doing this one, so let's all stand and enjoy singing together, Sing Till Sundown. little bit of confusion this morning. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Darcia Albertson. And uh, yeah, you can tell there's a little bit of confusion. My song sang gloom to gloom instead of gone to gloom. Good thing we have masks. <laughs> uh, okay. We begin today's service with our territorial acknowledgement, and it is responsive. Long ago, all of this land was covered by ice. But God, our Creator, brought back the warmth, pulling back the ice and revealing this land. Pulling back the ice. Oh, is that right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, plants and animals returned to the land. And it was good. Then God gave to the land many peoples. And many peoples to the land. To care for one another. To live together. And in this time, we celebrate the gifts of Treaty 1 and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We celebrate all who make this place a home today. We celebrate together with love. As a people called to love and serve others. We eagerly await a day when the law of the land is love. Where all will share its abundance together. We work and wait for that day when all will live together. In hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, apparently I have a change, so uh, bear with me. Notes are no good now. <laughs> Welcome to COVID world. You, your family and friends are invited to the Blue Christmas service. There has been a change of plans. The service will now take place exclusively on Zoom, Wednesday, December 22nd at 7 p.m. Please watch your email this coming week for the link of the service. If you are without a computer and would like to attend, please contact Kathy Welby and arrangements can be made to participate by telephone. This special service of remembrance, music, scripture, and candlelight is offered as an opportunity for those that need a quiet center at Christmas time, a time to remember their loved ones no longer with them, loss of health and or job, or simply a step away from the busyness of the season. We look forward to you joining us for this special service. And also the planning of the Christmas Eve service on Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. and the Cookies and Carol service on Sunday, December 26th at 10.30 a.m. is complete. However, with COVID continuing to disrupt our lives on a daily basis, and certainly this morning, 
In-person worship services here at Gray Street may be impacted. Please monitor your emails and or check the church website page this coming week for updated information regarding both of these services. And also a reminder, the Christmas pierogi orders are ready for pickup immediately following this morning's service. Thank you for your support. And I think that is it, except the lighting of the candle. As we prepare our hearts to celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, we light the candle of love. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, was born into human flesh as a sign of God's great love for us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we find our salvation in God's gift of love to humankind. May we be comforted by the warmth of love, and may this love be our strength and our guide in all we do. Amen. <coughs> Our call to worship this morning is responsive. Oh, wisdom, coming towards us on the breath of God, seeping into every crack and corner of the world with strength and gentleness to order everything just right. Come now and show us the way to wholeness. Oh, God, come here and save. Oh, Adonai, shepherd of God's people, you made yourself known to Moses in a burning bush and let him in on life's best secrets on that very same mountain. Come now, take us into your confidence as well. O oh God, draw near and save. O oh, root of Jesse, budding from a dead branch as a sign of hope for everyone, the leaders of this world will stand in amazement at you and all their people as well. Come quickly to deliver us from the rottenness of our politics. O oh God, draw near. O oh, Key of David, pa true pastor of all God's people, you open doors that no one can close and close doors that no one can open. Come now to set the prisoners free, all who live in darkness and despair. O oh God, draw near and save. O oh, radiant dawn, glory and beauty of God's own face, eternal sun of justice and peace, come now to shine for everyone who lives in the shadow of death. O God, God, and O shepherd of all the world, desire of every heart and nation, you are the heartbeat of our fragile humanity. Come now to save us, you who formed us from the dust of the earth. O God, God, and O Emmanuel, rightful ruler and giver of the secrets of life, desire of every heart and savior of the world, come now to make us your children. For you are our God. O God, draw near and save. Our opening hymn this morning is Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
Let us pray. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Lord. May our hearts leap with joy and our mouths be filled with songs of praise to welcome Christ in our midst. Amen. We continue in song this morning with him from Voices United 16, Mary, Woman of the Promise. <coughs> In confidence, of, in confidence of God's mercy, we come before God together to make our prayer of confession in unison. So let us pray together. God of life and love, the stories of Advent remind us that you are a God of surprises. You surprised Elizabeth with news she would bear a child late in life. You surprised Mary with news she would bear our Savior. Your surprises overturned their lives. We confess that we do not always meet life's surprises with the same courage. Forgive us when we hesitate to greet you in the unexpected. Forgive us when we prefer routine over new possibilities. Christina Rossetti declared the truth of God's love for us in a poem. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Love shall be our token, love for plea and gift and sign. We together have made our plea for mercy, trusting in God's gift of love made known and made flesh in Jesus. We receive God's forgiveness and hope as a lasting token of God's love. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Good morning. Good morning. I'm back. <laughs> wow. It's the last Sunday of Advent. The last Sunday before Christmas. All of the waiting and the preparing and the dreaming is almost over. Soon, we will see the baby Jesus. Let's remember our Advent wreath one more time. The only candle that is still waiting to be lit is the white Christ candle in the middle. The light of the Advent wreath has been growing brighter every week as we have brought the flame to life on each new candle and around the outside are the four candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Today is the Sunday of love. There are lots of ways that we can share love, that we can feel love. Love can be something as obvious as saying, I love you. It can be more subtle. We show someone that we love them by acting kindly, by doing a good deed, by caring for each other. <laughs> I, have, um, I have kind of a silly story to read to you this morning. It's a cat in the hat story called Bamboozled. As I flip pages. There we go. Okay. Next slide, John. Thank you. Today's Pammy's birthday, said Sally. She's two. I don't know what she'd like for a present, do you? For my birthday, said Nick, I got a new bike. But I have no idea what a panda would like. Whatever we get her, we need right away. We have to get Pammy a present today. Need a present, the cat asked. I know what to do. Today we will fly to Bam Wham a Boo Boo. As soon as we get there, I'll introduce you to my good friend, a panda, whose name is Zuzu. I'm sure that Zuzu can help with our quest. She can tell us what present a panda likes best. Soon they landed and started to look for Zuzu. These plants, said the cat, are a grass called bamboo. Bamboo grows fast and it's tall and it's thick. Too high to see over to find Zuzu, said Nick. This bamboo is growing right up to the sky. Watch this, said the cat. I know what we can try. Bamboo stilts, said the cat. Now I see everywhere. I think Zuzu lives in the bamboo over there. The cat started to wobble. The stilt started to sway. Watch out, Sally cried. The cat's coming this way. That cat didn't panic. He knew what to do. He reached out and grabbed a strong piece of bamboo. Bamboo can bend. And the cat held on tight. He flew through the air, then he flew out of sight. Are you all right? asked Nick. Yes. I'm fine, said the cat. When I visit Zuzu, I always do that. <laughs> and look, I, I found something I'd like to show you. It's a back scratcher made from a piece of bamboo. Bamboo is hollow and it's very light. I can reach every itch on the left and the right. Give it a try. You will love it, I know. I don't see it, said Sally. Where did it go? You know, Sally, said Nick, this really is weird. That bamboo back scratcher just disappeared. The bamboo started rustling and shuffling around. I think, Sally said, that Zuzu has been found. Sure enough, it was Zuzu. The kids smiled at her, a beautiful panda with black and white fur. Here's your back scratcher, said Zuzu. It's true, I love anything that is made of bamboo. She did something next that was quite a surprise as Sally and Nick looked on with wide eyes. She took the back scratcher and bit it in two. Is this something, asked Nick, that you usually do? I eat lots of bamboo, she said. I peel it and chew it. With our strong teeth and jaws, all pandas can do it. 
Sally said, we need a present for Pammy Panda, our friend. Is there something special that you'd recommend? Well, said Zuzu, what I would suggest is a gift of bamboo. That's what pandas like best. Zuzu, cried the cat, meet thing one and thing two. They are experts on what can be made from bamboo. Pandas eat mostly bamboo, that is true, but bamboo can be made into other things too. Bamboo drums, picture frames, bicycles, and a fence. Bamboo lamps are on sale now for 99 cents. <laughs> when I blow through bamboo, Sally said, I can hear a musical sound that is pretty and clear. When I bang on these big bamboo drums with a stick, I can beat out a really great rhythm, said Nick. They began making music, though it wasn't planned. They soon put together the all bamboo band. The cat started to sing, that cat couldn't be stopped. But when it comes to singing, the cat can't be topped. He sang our world's better because of bamboo. It bends and it's hollow, it's light and strong too. Pandas eat it all day, they can peel it and chew it and we can make music by blowing air through it. I loved your bamboo song, Zuzu said. To thank you, here's a present for Pammy, a bunch of bamboo. It's tough and it's tall, it bends and it's sweet. And for pandas like us, it's the best food to eat. Back home, Nick said, Pammy, this present's for you from a panda who lives in Bamwama Boo Boo. She told us that pandas eat mostly bamboo. It's just right for her, so it's just right for you. Pammy knows, said the cat. Bamboo's what pandas need. She said that, asked Sally. And the cat said, indeed. <laughs> I told you it was kind of a silly story. But in the story, Sally and Nick do something special for their friend, Pammy Panda. Taking a bit of time to get a special gift for Pammy's birthday is a way of showing her that she's loved. In the Christmas story, there are lots of examples of love. Joseph loves Mary and cares for her. The shepherds love the savior baby and come to see him. The wise men who we will talk about in the coming weeks bring gifts to show their love. And most importantly, God loves us so much that he sent his son to live with us and to teach us about God's love. In John's gospel near the end of Jesus' life, Jesus gives his disciples a new commandment. He says, love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Today is the Sunday of love. Find a way to tell someone, to show someone that they are loved. And in case you're interested, I might be able to help with that a little. I have a few little bags. And inside the bag, There's a sort of a card. <clears throat> it's, um, it's green. It's got some lines on it. It's not very exciting. But you can take that folded piece of green paper. <clears throat> and also in the little bag, there's another little Ziploc bag filled with some decorations that you can add to the card inside and outside. You can play with it, you can write on it, you can draw a picture inside. Print your name, write your name, and at the end of it all, you have a little Christmas card. Nice. And then when you're finished, you take that Christmas card and you give it to someone you love to show them that you're thinking of them. You're welcome. Let's share the love.
Diane, I'm waiting for the chocolate to come out of that tickle bag. <laughs> and I thought, surely to goodness, they'd be there on the day of love. <laughs> Still not there. <laughs> Darn it. I am reading from the scripture Luke 1, verses 39 to 55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his oh, pardon me. Yes. In remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. I think it was quite fitting to have Darcy be our scripture reading reader today. She comes from a lineage of, of singers and musicians, so it's quite nice to, to hear the words of Mary's song from her lips. So I'm going to start the sermon this morning uh, by apologizing to everyone who really likes the modern Christmas song, Mary Did You Know? I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. Um, this song was written in 1984, and it's been growing in popularity ever since. And yes, it's a beautiful tune. I am not disputing that, but I have to tell you, the lyrics are terrible. Terrible. So the song asks Mary a bunch of questions. Did you know, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Mary, did you know that he is the Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that when you kiss your baby boy, you kiss the face of God? Yes, she knew. She knew. <laughs> Mary has her own song that we heard this morning, the 2,000-year-old song in the Gospel of Luke called the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord. So the modern song asks, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? And Mary answers in her own words, God has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. His mercy is from generation to generation. She knew. The modern song asks, Mary, did you know that your son is Lord of all creation? Mary sang, from henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Mary knew. Mary knew that the child placed in her womb by the Holy Spirit was going to change the world. Mary knew that through the child in her womb, God was making good on all of God's covenant promises. God was acting to cast down the mighty and corrupt rulers. God was intervening to fill the hungry and send the rich away empty. As we heard in today's gospel reading, Mary's powerful song 
is the first thing that bursts from her lips after she reaches her cousin Elizabeth's house. This song bursts forth, forth out of this incredible moment. As soon as Mary enters the room, the child in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy in recognition that this yet unborn child, John the Baptist, is in the presence of the newly conceived Jesus. Elizabeth, herself a recipient of a miraculous pregnancy, as she believed she was way past her childbearing years, she in this moment, John the Baptist leaps in her womb and she is, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit and she begins to prophesy about Mary's miraculous pregnancy even before Mary has told her that she is pregnant. And when we, we focus on the joy of this moment, it's, it's easy to forget how dangerous this whole situation is for Mary. We know that according to the law of Mary's time, when a woman became pregnant out of wedlock, she could be punished by being stoned to death. And yet in all of this, I'm, I hesitate to say that Mary was brave. I think a lot of people think, oh, Mary was so brave in this situation. But Mary initially hears the news of her pregnancy from the angel, and her reply is, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to God's will. And so when Mary gives her consent to God's action in her life that could very well lead to her execution, I think that is something that is going beyond being having a brave, courageous, or bold personality. I think that the unequivocal yes that Mary gives to God is something that can only come from being filled by the Holy Spirit. So when Mary is filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit displaces all her fear, including her fear of potential execution due to her illegitimate pregnancy. The Holy Spirit fills Mary with new life, the new life of Christ that will heal all the brokenness of the world, the new life that can right all the wrongs of the world. And so filled by the Holy Spirit, Mary bursts into song, but there's something strange about Mary's song. I don't know if you noticed. Mary does not sing about what God is doing or what God will do in the present or future tenses. Mary sings in a form of the past tense as though in that very moment she is realizing that what God has done in conceiving Jesus in her womb by the Holy Spirit, in that moment, she sings her Magnificat and she knows that the promises of salvation have already come true. Jesus is not yet born, yet Mary sings that God has scattered the proud, has put down the mighty from their seat, and has exalted the lowly. So when we hear Mary's song, we can notice that the tenses of her verbs, the past, the present, and the future, are all sort of collapsing into one moment. And in this moment, there is something about eternity. There is something of eternity. In this moment, in Mary's song, the Holy Spirit in her gives us, who hear her song, an experience of the eternal God who is beyond time. And we sense something of the eternal, the transcendent, the God who created the world, the God who gave free will to every person, the freedom to choose right or wrong, and God who exists beyond the power of human perception, who is, exists eternally, both within and beyond time, God simultaneously witnesses, this is where things get complicated, God simultaneously witnesses all the wrong that human beings have done in the past, all that they are doing in the present, and all that they will do in the future. And God, in God's infinite wisdom, does something to heal all of the wrongness without taking away human freedom. And that something is becoming flesh in Mary's womb. So God becomes human, is born into human history in the ancient Near East, approximately 2,000 years ago, God lives as a human being, suffers as a human being, and dies as a human being. And through the resurrection, God shows that God has exalted the lowly and that God 
has triumphed over evil and death. Maybe it's impossible to put into words what God accomplished in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christians, for give or take 2,000 years, have been trying to put this into words, and I do not know how successful we've been, but one of the best words I find right now for me is mystery. And this is a powerful mystery. Even as we come to the limits of human language, unable to fully grasp or describe what and why God has done, what God has done through Jesus Christ, even in the limits of our own language for this, we have the words of Mary, the mother of God, who says God has done great things. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. God has exalted the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things. When a group of us were working on the words for our 75th anniversary hymn that we heard a couple weeks ago, we talked a bit about how we are presently living in what is called the post-Christian era. So Christendom is defined as the period, the historical period between uh, the, the Christian conversion of the Emperor Constantine in the 4th century AD, and that lasted until sometime in our present century. In the era of Christendom, Christianity was united with the earthly political powers for good and for ill. In some ways, um, a lot of us would probably agree there were things that went on in the name of Christ that were really unchristlike during the period of Christendom. But all that aside, we no longer live in the era of Christendom and we're starting to recognize that we are living in the post-Christian era, where practicing Christianity is seen as an increasingly unpopular personal choice that some of us are making. Yet still we feel the call to gather in the name of Christ because God continues to fill us with the Holy Spirit through the church. And we need to come together as a Christian community because we recognize that the thing for which we are hungering right now at the deepest core of our being is not a newer iPhone, a day at the spa, a spouse who never forgets to pick up their socks, or the admiration of the people around us. We have a deeper hunger right now. We have a hunger for the eternal. What we are hungering for is the bread of life. We are hungering for Jesus Christ. Mary, who lived in pre-Christendom, hungered for these same things that we hunger for. And when the Holy Spirit filled her, she knew that the eternal God had filled the hungry with good things for all time through Jesus Christ, through the baby conceived of the Holy Spirit inside of her. So we Christians who now live in post-Christendom, whenever and however we can, we seek one another out, just as Mary went with haste to visit her cousin Elizabeth, bursting with the good news of the child within her that had displaced her fear. Whenever and however we can, we continue to seek one another out. And in those precious times that we have together, whenever we are joining our hearts and minds and spirits with one another, the song of the mighty works of God bursts from our lips, our souls magnify the Lord. God has done great things. When we are brought low, God comes to us with mercy. The gospel is good news, friends. It is eternally and it is always good news. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is More Voices 120, My Soul Cries Out. <clears throat> Yes. 
It is the season of Advent, the season of gifts and giving as expressions of our love. With love in our hearts, we share our gifts and extend the grace that is born anew in our lives every day of every season through the power of God's great love born in Jesus Christ. If you are not already on par and wish to make an offering today, the offering plate is at the entrance to the sanctuary and you may place it in there after the service or you can also send an e-transfer to grayunited at gmail.com. In celebration of the sharing of gifts within and beyond this community, let us sing together. us pray. Generous God, we offer our gifts to you as tokens of our love. Let the sharing of our gifts bring hope to those in need, ministry within this community, and love to all who are hurting. With these gifts, we commit ourselves to the way of love. Amen. We have another hymn now. It didn't make it into the slideshow, but it must be sung because it's an excellent hymn. So... <laughs> And the lyrics are not complicated, so we're going to do a quick refresher for everybody who's going off of memory. The choir has their books so they can lead you. The hymn is The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy. So we've got The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy that repeats a few times. 
and they say that his name is Jesus. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believer. Oh yes, believer. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. So that's most of it. Verse two is the angel saying when the baby was born. And verse three is the shepherds came when the baby was born. I think that's about it, right? Yeah, Does that look good? good? So we're ready. Okay. <laughs> hope you hope you got that. Okay. <laughs> Let us bring our hearts before God in prayer. God of love, as we deal with uncertainty around the current public health situation, we ask that you hold us in your love. Help us in the knowledge of your love to find ways that we ourselves can become bearers of your love in the world. Creator of joy, Surround all who are struggling with sadness right now. Hold them in your tender embrace. Open our hearts to you so that all who are lonely, all who are frustrated, all who feel despair, and all who feel grief may be healed by your loving presence. Spirit of hope, we welcome you into our hearts and life. Help us to be witnesses to the truth of your salvation within our lives. Holy Spirit, fill us with your hope, displacing all our fear and guiding us to become more Christ-like as we encounter the challenges of our times. Help us to continue to proclaim the good news and guide us as we find ways to sing with the angels 
of peace on earth and goodwill to all. We join our song within your church, the community of the faithful that continues throughout and beyond time. We join our voices to the voice of Mary, whose life and song magnified the Lord. And we join our voices to all of Christ's disciples, the ones whom he taught to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number nine in Voices United, People Look East. go forth in this Advent season, let us seek to love God with all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength, and let us find ways to share the love of God with one another. May the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen.